Hey everybody, I'm back with a new book review of Joshua Cohen's Moving Kings. As you guys have already known in my video of what books I'm going to read before 2020 ends, this was one of them. And I figured I would probably tackle this one first since it's a shorter book. And the topic of this novel is something that I've been really interested in for quite a bit. And it is, it tackles in, a, in its own unique way the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and how it kind of influences American culture as well as, you know, the culture in Israel and Palestine as well. Joshua Cohen is a really unique writer. He's, if you are familiar with other Jewish writers, much like Philip Roth or uh, Nathaniel West or someone like that, there he has somewhat of the same style as them, but he, he doesn't really copy, he, he doesn't copy them because that's someone who's, he, he typically... What good writers do when they wear their influences and they try to take from them, they'll use their own spin to it so it can be uniquely theirs. And that is what Joshua Cohen does. But what's really interesting about Moving Kings is how he tells the story of how the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is within America as well as Israeli like citizens or even people who are Jews because that's kind of what... Jewish writers do. They talk about Jews in relation to American culture as well. Now, the story is about David King, who is, and as you can obviously tell, it's an inverse of King David. And I think, it, and I understand why he, may, he makes the main character's name David King, because David King, he goes through in the novel that he is actually the son of an immigrant who actually was a victim of the Holocaust, but he escaped. He was able to get out and he was able to move to New York after he escaped to make his own moving business, which is called, um, I forgot, King's Moving, moving like King's Moving, essentially, where they essentially work as a storage unit and also as, they work as evictors, essentially, whenever people are being evicted in the Brooklyn, Queens, like New York areas, they work as the movers. And so it's really ironic because I read in a, I watched it in an interview that he did with um, I forget her name but it's on YouTube about describing what he was trying to get across with the novel and he says that it's he's trying to get across how people what they do for work and how that kind of defines who they are in some cases and also how certain people don't have homes and what I find interesting is that to me the general theme of Moving Kings is that in the end, nobody has a home. I'm not talking about just a house because the whole point of Kings Moving is that they're getting people out of their houses because they're not paying their rent and such, but it's also because of, you know, the financial crash and all that stuff. But people don't have homes. There, there's a distinction between a house and a home. A house is just a general description of a place where, you know, two bedrooms, one bedroom, a living room, dining room, that kind of stuff. But a home is a specific thing. And this is where the Israeli-Palestinian conflict comes in the point of the novel. Because there are two characters, Yoaf and Yuri. They are, they are two, uh, they used to serve with the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, during the Second Gaza War in the year 2014. Which lasted a few months in that year. And it descri he describes how what they had to go through. And what they went through was essentially they had to work as... Border Patrol for the for Israel, in a sense, and he describes how the way they lived in that sort of environment was like the IDF, in a way, worked as if it were a parent that it told them what to do, it told them how to act. But once that you're out of the IDF, it's like there's an ironic twist to it because it's like the IDF doesn't want to know anything about you. It wants you to act in certain ways. It wants you to act as a mercenary or as someone to keep your guard. But that's all it needs from you. It gives you what it needs out of you. But once you're done, once you're out of it, it no longer cares about you and you need to figure out something else to do. And so what he describes is how Yuri and Yoav, how they try to fulfill their own lives now that they no longer have a purpose to serve within the IDF. And that's kind of Joshua Cohen's unique interpretation and criticism of how Israeli how Israel is working at the moment when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, because that's one of the main reasons. That's a big controversial issue happening in the Middle East. It's been happening for ye for decades, almost for 
for years. It's been happen going on for such a long time. And and the point with David King, who's the owner of, King, of, of the King's Moving, is he's a Jew, but he doesn't identify himself as if, as a sort of like, there's a contrast between him and Yoav and Yuri because Yoav and Yuri, there are moments when they are trying to understand their identity and their place within the world once they're out of the IDF. Yuri is a bit of a harder case because once he's out of the IDF, it's like he kind of is, he just kind of goes about his day, especially when he ends up working with King, with David. That's the thing. Yoav and Yuri end up working for David at the um, moving, at his moving place. And Yuri has somewhat of a, he's more introspective. He's more, he kind of takes a, himself aback from the duties that he's doing with his job. Whereas Yuri, he's still kind of just doing what he has to do regardless of what ha has to happen. I think that he goes into the history. I think the, the reason for this is because Yuri, even when he's not in the IDF, it goes into his history in that he doesn't really have much of a connection with his family. When he was at home in within a in a where was it? I don't think in Gaza. When he was at home in Gaza, he wasn't close with his family. Like his he has he has sisters and they can do whatever they want for him, but he doesn't really have this personal he doesn't really know what he wants to do with his life. And since in Israel, it, it's he it's kind of implied through Joshua Cohen's novel that boys, once they get to the old, like the military age, like eighteen, like a young adult. They have to apply for the IDF. They don't, it's, it's kind of like a draft sort of thing, but you have to apply for it once you reach a certain age. It's like a mandatory thing. So there's a criticism of how people in this, in that side of the world, in, the, in Israel and such, that, and Jews, that if they reach a certain age, they have to apply for this. It's like they have no choice in the matter. And there's a brilliant scene later in the book with Yuri after he's, uh, I think it's after he's stayed his time, in which he's talking with a rabbi, and the rabbi is essentially telling him that it's essentially his duty to maintain a relationship or to keep with what the IDF stood for or what it stands for, and that's to maintain the homeland of Israel. And that kind of sticks in his psyche throughout the novel because by the time the novel gets to its closing point, he starts losing it. He starts going crazy and he has to, and ends up making him get killed because this is what happens when you have a psyche, a human psyche, being told that this is what you have to do in life versus what he doesn't know what he wants to do. So it just conflates with him. So with Yuri, he's someone that all he has learned in life is to be like a warrior, to be like a soldier, to work as a soldier. While as your, whereas Yoav, for example, there's a there's actually a moment in history when David goes to Israel at one point around when he when Yoav is a kid to meet with his I think it's his uncle and he needs to talk with him about I can't remember the exact exchange but there's a moment when Yoav and David and his, and Yoav's mother they're going to the Wailing Wall in, in Jerusalem that's where Jews will will pray but it's really close to also where uh, the Muslim, Muslims will go to pray. For their worshiping, I can't remember the exact name of it, but I'm going to do more studying on that. And the way he describes it is that there's different checkpoints. There's different areas with different flags, different nationalities. If you're a certain ethnicity or a certain people, you can't go over here and you can't go over there. And it just sets up this tension between people and ideas. And the whole point of the novel, as I was saying, is that no one has a home. And, the, and I think, and I'm pretty sure Joshua Cohen had this in mind, what I'm about to say. Since he is a big, since he is a big reader of the Tanakh, if you read the Tanakh, which is the Christian Old Testament, not many people know the actual Jewish phrasing. I like to say Tanakh because I like to be respectful to how the Jews and how, uh, how they view their own holy book. So that's what I'm going to use. In the Tanakh, if you read the, the Torah the five books of Moses, in Genesis, and even in uh, even leading into like the books of Samuel, the Jews are constantly on the move. They're constantly moving from place to place. Abraham lives in the land of Ur, but then when Yahweh comes and tells him to give him a covenant, he tells him, go to the land of Canaan, that's what's going to be your land if you 
essentially obey me and you follow my prescriptions. And so he goes there, but then throughout the book of Genesis, even Abraham is constantly on the move. He's constantly moving to different areas within the land of Canaan. And with King David in the book of Samuel, you'll notice that if you read it, that King David is constantly on the move as well. Although mostly that's because Saul is is losing it and he wants to kill David because he has an idea that David wants to usurp his authority. And, with, and because of that, King David is going to the land of the Philistines. He's joining them to fight against them. He's going into caves. He's just constantly on the move. So in a way... He, Joshua Cohen is taking the scriptures of, 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 his, of his own religion, of his, of his people, and he's connecting that to the, to the present in the sense that everyone in this story, in Moving Kings, they're constantly on the move. Yoav and Yuri, they live in Israel, they work for the IDF, but then once they're done, they go out, they move abroad, they go to New York, they're on the move. And that kind of comes with the title Moving Kings. And that's the kind that's the powerful irony he uses for this story. Because like King David from the book of Samuel, King David was on the move before he became the king, essentially. But even when he became the king, after he got after Saul was killed and he became king, he was on the move as he would he would go on the move even more. Whether it to be, you know, to evade capture or killing by his son Absalom, or even I can't remember the other parts. It's been a while since I need to read catch up on it. I'm currently rereading the Tanakh at the moment because I like reading different vo I, I like reading different uh, translations and different editions. I'm currently reading the Jewish Study Bible at the moment. I recently read Robert Alter's translation. It's really good, but that's how he connects the story of moving kings to the Tanakh because the point of moving kings, why it's called moving kings, is that no one has a home. People are constantly questioning what what is a home to us, and it's and it's so ironic and tragic that their job, Yoav and Yuri, as well as David King himself, is to evict people in the New York area. It's to evict them, and that's just their job. They don't. Yuri at the end of the novel actually con confronts, I mean Yoav confronts confronts Yuri about his opinion on everything. And let me find the passage real quick what he where he says exactly what he says. Sorry if it's taking quite a minute, but um Well, actually I'm not going to do that. As a matter of fact, I would recommend you people actually read Moving Kings because Joshua Cohen takes this stuff very seriously. He even said in the interview that I'm remembering that what he tried to do was to try to recount reality as much as he can because people may think that he's taking a specific political side on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and it's not even really a political side he's taking. He's taking a, a humanistic perspective, and that doesn't have to be a political thing. Not, not like humanistic like in the... You know, people will say, oh, you're a humanist, but just humanistic in the sense that he's wanting to hear different voices. He's hearing them and he's observing them. And that's what a writer does. That's what an author is is meant to do. They're supposed to observe their world, observe reality, and recount it as honestly as possible. And that's what he's doing in this. And the whole Palestinian-Israeli conflict is that and that's kind of the sad, that's the sadness of what Jews feel like is that they feel, I'm not going to speak for all Jews, but this is kind of, this is a general tradition that's going on. And that's Jews feel like the history of their scripture and the history of what the movements are going with is that they're inflicted with this sort of belonging that they want, but they don't know if they want to stick to the older traditions. Does that make sense? It's like what I mentioned how Yuri is talking to a rabbi and the rabbi is telling him what he should do. You should. You ought to be a soldier for Israel. That is your purpose. Whereas certain Jews don't want to feel like they have this inherent purpose. They have to view it for themselves. They have to find it for themselves. Otherwise, what's the point? And King David, uh, not King David, David King <laughs> at the end of the novel actually says... 
what is it? It's, it actually doesn't say that it, he, it says this about him. He was a Jew who couldn't seek refuge in Israel, who needed another Israel, who needed an alternate, an alternate. This is the point. Since in the, in the Tanakh, in the Torah, and in the book of Samuel, since Jews are constantly on the move, and they're itinerants, essentially. They're sojourners in a strange land. There's where that old idiom comes from. But that's also in the book of Exodus with Moses when he uh, has a child. And it's that Jews are constantly on the move. That's what happens in history. It's what happened when Jews were spreading out all over the world when, before it led up to World War II. And the whole Zionist, the Zionist movement, which was developing in the early 19th century, the late 19th century about we should go back to Israel and make it a nation state. We need to go back to our, to our origins of what the Tanakh, the Torah says we should, that we should be a, a nation for all nations. This is the point. The, who, who has a home? Everyone is being evicted. Everyone is on the move. Everyone is doing this because of their work as if they're told to do it. And it's such a tragedy. It's a tragic irony and it's beautiful in many ways too. So yeah, Moving Kings is a really good novel. I would recommend it to people who are interested in Jewish thought in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and ideas of identity, ideas of what it means to have a home and such like that. It's, it's really provocative, and I think if people were to read this, we would understand a little bit more about the other's perspective. And that's also important because the final character in the novel that we are introduced to is a man named Avery Luther, who changed his name to Amu Nabi because he, tra because he became a Muslim. And he's the last person that, move that the movers evict. And because they evict him, he gets revenge. He sets the house on fire. And that's where, when they're in the house, they all leave out. And that's when Yuri starts losing his mind. But at the end, it's just a... I'm sorry, I went a little too much information. But anyway, it just shows that J Joshua Cohen is interested in showing different perspectives. And how we all react to this. And what inevitably happens when we have these conflicts bring together so yeah people i hope you guys read this and for the next review i might actually tackle nat turner's confessions the confessions of nat turner by william styron next so be on the lookout for that